Welcome back. Welcome back to Ask Amy. I have a question today from Trisha. Trisha says, experts in the field say that my son, Matthew, who's nine, uh, might have some kind of autism, also an attention deficit disorder, and also that he's highly gifted. A lot of words that explain a lot and also scare me a lot. I so hear you on that, Trisha. They, they explain a lot and, and they can also feel they can feel freeing and, and like, oh, that makes sense. And they can at the same exact time feel limiting and scary. So she says, of course, this does not change a tiny bit about how perfect he is. No, it does not. And I'm very skeptical when it comes to any kind of diagnosis about kids. Me too. We as parents know that some things seem to stress him a lot. And we're also a bit worried when it comes to social interactions and feeling safe in some situations. There's a range that Trisha's saying she feels from let us help him the best way we possibly can and leave him alone. There's absolutely nothing wrong with him and I'll do everything to protect him from being labeled as weird or a problem or not okay. On the other hand, I want him to get what he needs, what's best for him, and maybe a diagnosis will help find the best path for him. I see a lot of doctors using scary words, having scary projections about his future. My question really is, how can I navigate through this? How can I learn what I have to learn and also protect him from some made up concepts about how kids have to be? I love this question, Trisha, and I feel you because, and I, and I think everyone can, whether we have a child in this situation or not, like we've all been here where it feels like this either or, you know, I mean, I know everyone listening who's had their own diagnosis, including myself, I've had several at times, you feel the tension of that. You feel that, okay, there's something to this. And, it, and like I said, sometimes it feels like freedom. Sometimes it feels like, oh, that makes things make sense. It can be amazing initially to have that diagnosis or that label. And then, and then often what happens is right on the other side of that, the, the relief or the understanding kind of fades away. And now we can start to feel boxed in and limited uh, by this label. And now, and now we start seeing, like you're seeing with Matthew, he's not this. He, he, my baby boy is not on the spectrum, highly gifted attention. Like these are all things he exhibits perhaps at times, but none of those are your baby, you know, and they never, ever will be. And I think that's a huge piece of this to really see that. And this is what I hear you asking, how, how can you benefit in some ways from the diagnoses or the labels to the extent that they're beneficial, but not, not get so wrapped up in them and maybe not help, help him to not get so wrapped up in him. Cause I, I'm guessing that's maybe there for you. It would be for me is like, I can see that my kid is not really these things, but will my kid see that they're not really these things. And, and there's a couple things in this I want to mention one. I want you to see that you already sense this. You already sense this giant in between, in between these words and extremes. And that's that's really all you need. And, and, and that's all you need to kind of impart on Matthew best you can. So you know it's a huge paradox that both can be true. What, what has a hard time with that is a brain. A brain is just a computer that says, whoa, you know, now we have this label. Let's throw out everything that doesn't match this label. And that's crazy. But that's what a computer would do. A computer, you have to pick one. Is it A or B? Is it, you know, one or two? But in life, we don't have to pick one. In life, it's exactly what you're saying in this in this letter, Tricia. It's all of it. It's it's a little bit of this stuff is displayed and I know that's not the truth. So you already have what you're asking for when you say, you know, like you see it, you know, it's there. You can help Matthew see this best you can by just sharing with you, with him, how you see him and helping him know, yeah, there are some things about your behaviors or the way your mind works, the way your brain works at times that people will call these things, but you aren't those things. You know, and, and again, that's true for everyone. We can all have a million labels, no matter what they are, even just personality characteristics that aren't really who we are. They're just labels that describe us some of the time. So in some ways, although I know the world doesn't always look at it this way, you know, Trisha, that's no different. It's no different 
than someone calling you or me shy or introverted or extroverted and us knowing, yeah, sometimes, but also sometimes not. Same thing with Matthew, exactly. So you keep knowing that it's a paradox. You keep knowing the truth of who he really is. And best you can, you share that with him along the way. I think that's how we can dip into a diagnosis or a label, use it for what it's worth, get some support that fits, and leave the rest. Because that's the other thing about this, is that you'll have people saying, oh, like you said here, um, I see a lot of doctors using scary words and having scary projections about his future. Exactly. But those doctors aren't talking about Matthew. They're, they think they are, like they kind of are, but it's not him because Matthew doesn't have a future right now. He's just a nine-year-old boy. There's nothing else there but what's here right now. So when anyone, give, including our own brain or doctors or anyone, give sweeping generalizations and projections, they are not about us. They are not about your kid. They are not about you. They are what a textbook says. In general, sometimes this tends to happen. You don't have to listen to that. And I, and I know that's so hard sometimes, And but I also know that you're ready for this, that you're on to that, that some projection is a statistic and, and it's not a for sure thing at all. And it's not personal and it's not about your kid. It's an in general, sometimes when people show this, these other things happen best you can I think you just like you don't even like again you'll know what to glean from that that might be helpful and then leave the rest aside so when it comes to all of these things like let's say they're giving you suggestions on how to help him in social situations or with attention or whatever it is just know that you and this is true for all of us not just moms but all of us we have this ability to take advice and take information and let what what feels right bubble to the surface and we don't it's not even a letting what feels right will bubble to the surface it will resonate with you you'll feel it as something worth trying period end of story we don't have to cling to it you don't have to do it forever it doesn't mean that if this strategy works, for example, in a social situation, that he has this label more or less. Not at all. It does, there's no meaning to it. See if you can be as kind of dumb as I like to say, Trisha, as possible. And just hear what you hear. You follow your intuition about what feels right for your kid in this moment only. You try it. You try some stuff. And you're really fluid with it. If something's not working or helping, fine. No problem. No problem. If it is, great. No problem. Keep going with it. None of it means anything. It's just trying stuff on, letting it go if it doesn't work, keeping it going if it feels right. And, and just being in this space, again, that's even before labels. I know it's not because I know there are some labels there. But where you're, you don't have to buy into the labels. It's before words, before labels, before definitions, where it's you can take in information and let your intuition be kind of the filter for it, rather than a doctor's diagnosis or a label or a concept, or for sure rather than a projection or a this is what's going to happen or any of that garbage. So you take stuff in, your own intuition filters what you want to try and what you're playing with. And there's just as little clinging and as little stake in the ground as you can get away with. I hope that makes sense. I know it feels, it can sound a little vague, but I also think, Trisha, this is going to make sense to you because you're already there. You're already there. You're seeing. He's not these labels, but there's something in this that's helpful. There is. And it's this giant middle ground. I mean, the whole world is a middle ground. Everything's a gray area. The only thing it's not a great area is our mind that wants everything to be yes or no, on or off, you know, but you're on to that. So you don't, you don't need to cling to any of that. And you just try things and you see. And again, really importantly, which I know you're doing, you, sh you show him this along the way. You keep letting him see himself the way you see him. And he won't see himself as these labels. Other people may or they may not, but but there's no box he fits into and he can he can see so much from that from you you sharing that with him so i hope this is helpful thank you so much for sending your question i hope it's helpful for others in this situation um 
and send your questions to ask Amy at the little school of big change.com about anything at all. And I'm here on Mondays to speak to them live. Thanks everyone. Have a great week.